a camera and we'll stream it a little bit. You know, that's the that's the one thing I was thinking the entire time. You know, we still haven't done <laughs> cooking found. with Anders. Yeah, the esports cooking show. It's gonna happen at some point. But next time we'll see. Now, although our now like with with the name, you know, Room on Fire may may be like a little bit negative i don't know going into it you know it's like a hell's kitchen thing going on there pretty much right you know it's kind of not what you want to be thinking about when you're in a kitchen you know the whole place is on fire could we would gordon reply if we sent him a you know a letter do you want to come okay but all i can think of now is that we have to come up with the recipe for the room on fire steak because you know it's like room on fire is sti well, steak, steak is kind of you know steak is kind of just like one thing though it's really kind of hard to make steak in different then you'd have to go like different kind of sauces something like that maybe yeah, you could do that yeah. I'm pretty good. I I make like really good like tenderloin. Like I'm oh, good. Yeah? At, yeah, yeah, good at that stuff too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're gonna um, we, we're gonna come up with some ideas yeah, and right? start jotting this down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll do it. Don't while worry. You're here, eventually, while you're here. eventually it'll come around. We'll do it. While you're here for frag bite, we'll do it. <sighs> yeah, we're gonna get held to that now. So um, we are still waiting, of course, for the second half here. If you're just joining us, a big welcome to the show. This is uh, Group B uh, for the third season of Frag Bite Master. So we're still. At the group stage, we have a double elimination bracket. So, you know, win or lose here in the group stage, it just determines whether you go out to the upper or the lower bracket and what seed you get. Um, so that that's the really big difference here, which is very cool. It means that, you know, we, we're absolutely sure at the end of it that the best teams make it through. Yeah. And it's kind of nice to actually have the system going on because it's really hard to say who's the, which is, who's, what's the best team in the world right now? Well, not only, like, is it the format, but, like, in the online match, right? But also... We ran this similar, you know, last time. Yeah. But it was best of ones in the groups. Yeah. And now we've kind of like doubled up on that. We've said, okay, best of ones for the first matches in the groups. But after that, the matches that yeah. decide, you know, which seed you're going to get out of that group, best of threes. I really, so, really, really, really hope that this is a format that takes on mm -hmm. all elsewhere because well, I've actually, the, we were we were running different systems in the past uh, for yeah. for tournaments. Then Lurpus um, actually came up with an article. Uh, that said, why don't we do like the GSL did, uh, or do, and have like a GSL type group format where you know you lose two matches, you're out; you win two matches, you're you're in. And I think that was that's been good for a while, but now it's also become a little bit apparent. And I think even Lopez has also been talking about this since then, mm -hmm. that this format also can be a little bit tricky. Cutthroat. Yeah, it's a little bit cutthroat, especially because some teams just generally do worse in investor ones, mm -hmm. and it can be a little bit boring sometimes watching a really good team that you know could make it far. But they lose, you know, to you know, to two teams and the two best of ones. Exactly, that's, that's the thing. But now, the, but that's the beauty of this situation. Yeah. It's but the thing is, is that time, right? I mean, we have we have the time to to take, you know, to make one group last two days. Make more time, Sam Lowe. You can make more time. Just gonna snap my fingers, the next major, be like, yo, <laughs> this is for three days. We make it four. I'm actually really curious how, how they're gonna do it for because they haven't released be, any details about Dreamhack Winter, same, right? Well, they have. They said, well, I mean, we know the days. So yeah. we know that the groups are going to be played on one day, then the quarterfinals, and then semis and finals. So the groups were, were it's probably going to be GSL best of one format because yeah. they don't have that extra day to be able to run, to be able to run on. Uh, I'd, I'd, sh I'd show up a day early and work for free if, um, if we could do that. Well, Tabson is gonna be um, is gonna be going down here already. Really quick rush into the B bomb site. We're finally back into the second half here. As that's a great. Oh wow, Mike Kelly is gonna pick up Dupree as well. That was crazy. That has got to be a candidate for player of the day. What a sickening headshot. And now you can see the rest of the Dignes house. They're just standing still. Rock solid. They were stunned. That's a shot that made it across the world, I think. And Chris J is coming in now. Mouse Sports. Yeah, they, they hear the message that uh, that Mike Kelly just sent out. What a beautiful shot. Yeah, off the back of that. But then Device has to come in. He's got his P2K in hand now. And he manages to find one headshot. He picks up Mike Alele as well. Crossfire potential here for Alu, but AC's going to oh. do the job alone. And that's it. Mike Alele coming roaring back into this match with those two headshots. But that's where oh. it stops for Mouse Sports. They, they, toss, they, they keep their cool. This, the first one is so good, but the second yeah, one is absurd. Nice. That is... What a sexy shot. I mean, I, I'm almost heartbroken that Mouse Sports actually <laughs> don't win the round after it because it feels like they deserve it. Double ump though. This is sick. Okay, off of the back of this change, you know, recent update, the buff to SMGs and ump really stood out. It does massive damage versus armor. The whole, the only drawback is that it's only got 25 bullets in the mag, but you're still getting 600 bucks per kill with this bad boy. So, looks like it's uh, already Dignitas and Mouseports willing to go for it. Oh well, I mean, Mouseports are making it work here. They're getting the kills in. They're setting themselves up in a good position. They're closing the door on device. And oh, he gets the spray through. Headshot straight on. Gets time to reload. And he's going to finish off with a third shot. And device ends it right there. 16 to 1.
So that's potentially another candidate for play of the day type thing. That, that was just right a there. really, really good angle. That right there. <laughs> okay. Devices around. That right there is a play of the day th right there. That, if we've seen one throughout all the matches today, that's definitely play of the day material. You lock down the map for your team, and it's a wall bang and a spray down. I mean, you know, yeah. traditionally, you know, 16-1 type match should should be pretty boring because it's one side and everything, but we had some great action here. I'm not even that oh, yeah. sad, but it's oh, yeah. overpass. I mean, we're still getting to know this map a lot, mm -hmm. and Dignitas just steamroll uh, mouse boards. All right, now what's going to be really fun is we've had two maps of overpass tonight, you know, and this is post-patch. You know, we're seeing some of the changes with the acceleration, the movement, all that jazz, but now let's go ahead and take a look at it on Mirage. But let's go ahead and take a look at the matches that are some of the plays that happened here because, oh, you know, yes. as Anders just said, there was a lot of good ones, and it started off real strong, even at the beginning here with Device. I mean, Device was the king of pistols today as far as we're concerned. Both halves coming up big for his team. Yeah, definitely. And that's just a lot of cool plays all around. Um, mouse bots having some unfortunate technical issues halfway through. Um, but who knows, if they had won that pistol round in the second half after Mike Kalele went nuts, who knows if, if they couldn't have made it, uh, a sick comeback again. They go 14-0, right? Yeah, who that knows? Would be, you have to go. I mean, that would be big. <laughs> yeah, that, that right there, AC award for sportsmanship, right? Yeah, that's really nice. Because, you know, knifing people does give you that sick bonus. So it'd be a little, a little bit of a shame if you just stole that away just because of that. But yeah, Alu couldn't make it through at the end here. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's close. The Mirage is going to be the second map. And this is a map that Mouse Sports are very good at playing. Absolutely. Mouse Sports very good. I mean, yeah. that's the thing. I love it. We have a real solid set of maps for all three, for both of these teams. All three of the maps, the teams are very strong in the Mirage. And then Dust 2, if necessary, to close out this best yeah. of three. So it's as good as it gets right now. This is the battle for first seed. And so we're going to take a, court, a short break. Word from our sponsors. But when we come back, we'll have Team Dignitas versus Mouse Sports on Mirage. <laughs> Nu är nya Kasumo.com här. Just nu får du dubbel på kontot och 110 gratis chanser att vinna storkovan. Kasumo, ett kasino. Kasumo.com Ja, välkommen till Estrella Lifehacks. Idag tänkte jag visa hur man gör en snygg skål av sin chipspåse. Ta kanterna längst ner och sen rullar du liksom uppåt. Typ så, så kan du placera den vart du vill. En skål med sour cream and onion. Finns det något godare?
running in our blood The answers are lying here within Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for the Frag by Masters Season 3 Counter-Strike Global Offensive Tournament. We are in our winner match here at Group B between Dignitas and Mouse Sports, and currently Dignitas are up 1-0 after their win on Overpass. Yes, quite a convincing win, but, you know, it's hard to say how much Mouse Sports had a chance to get their feet mm -hmm. on the ground. Um, looked like they could have actually made a cool comeback on the second half if they if they just hadn't run into the vice at the end, wall banging Pretty his way right. to victory. Pretty much like well, the vice's reaction in that situation, he's like, oh, you just closed the door. I'm just going to shoot here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay. Close the door on me? Yeah, keep me out of the party? You. Not going to happen. Not a gentleman. This is what happens. To yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly. Well, look, guys, we're going to be going on to Mirage between these two teams. So hopefully some of the issues are, you know, have been ironed out in the meantime. Yeah. And now we're just ready to, to get it on. And Dignitas are a very good Mirage team. So this is going to be very tough for Mouse Sports. Mouse Sports, you know, we always say that yeah. Mouse Sports, they love to play Mirage. I mean, they've got the double op potential there with Alu and Chris J. And we've seen good results from them in the past there, but Dignitas also have come into their own on that map. Yeah, but and I still I still feel like out of a, out of, you know, a bunch of the maps, I still think like Mirage is still like in third place or something for Dignitas. And maybe even... Really? Yeah, I think so. Okay, maybe like Nuke would they be ahead of Mirage, but... Yeah, I mean, I would say like, you know, they even play Inferno pretty well. They do? I just, I just see... I, they are good at it. It's not like they're good at it. I just think there are other maps that they're better at. Okay. So, um, I don't know. And Mouse Sports, I mean... It's I think like, some of the biggest upsets they've had against top-level teams have actually been on Mirage or Dust2. It's like the, those are the two Mouse Sports maps that I think about. <laughs> I got distracted because I don't have a neck anymore. Anders. No neck. Well... Yeah, okay. So, let's... <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. getting back into it. Yeah, no, it's it's tough to say because also Mirage isn't that go-to Inferno or Dust2, right? You know, it's like it's not the, the go-to map that we see all the time. Yeah. It almost feels like Cash is taking its place as that go-to third map. I mean, we've yep. been seeing a lot of teams play Cash True, recently. Actually. So now Mirage, you know, where exactly do the teams stay stand on it? Because it used to be, you know, Fnatic and then VP. Uh, Dignitas kind of took that there. And then Na'Vi as well came out as a team that was really good on Mirage. So but where I mean, did Dignitas fall on the, on the ranking on that map? I mean, during um, Gamescom, Cologne and ESL and all that stuff, there was that one crazy game that Cloud9 had against Dignitas on Mirage, where yeah. Cloud9, you know, Hiko went insane and, and ended up stealing it away from the Danish team. Going so, I mean, there Hiko. is some evidence, I think, that, that Dignitas actually can play this map pretty well because yeah. they, they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with Cloud9 on that. But... I don't know what to say. I think I think the double up setup is a good point to bring up here because I think if Chris 
and Alu are both sort of halfway hitting their shots, mm-hmm. it's it's gonna be it's gonna be really powerful. Well, like going off of what we saw in overpass, do we expect Chris J to go for that AWP yeah, now? I do. To be the to be the point man for the AWP. I mean, no, overpass. Post. I mean, just imagine what happened on like the last time they played overpass, or overpass, or at least the last time we got to see Mouse Sports play overpass. Yeah. was versus LC right and uh, London Conspiracy, and they des- destroyed him. It was like the Chris J show. You know, every, every yeah. shot that Chris J took. You know, every shot you take. It was just. No, I'm trying here, but it was like you know, Chris J no, was just like this I, force of nature, and he just mauled people. But tonight, he's not the AWP man. It seems like Alu, even Michael Lele picking up the AWP instead of him. So, what's is Chris J taking a step back, L J W, where it's just like, okay, I need to take a break from the sniper rifle? I hope not. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I think I'm gonna attribute Chris's, uh, you know, hiatus from it for yeah. for being the map. I think that's that's the main thing. And then I, I'm, I'm guessing he'll be back on track here. Or the change. Yeah, that could be too. You're right. The the movement changes, the tagging changes. Maybe Chris just feels like he's gonna have to take a little st- a, a little while to, to relearn everything. I mean, it's such it's such a fresh patch. It's really really early to try and guess at what the ultimate result is of gonna course. be. Of course, of course. But I mean, yeah, the, it'll it'll have really big impacts. And the fact is, when you make a change like this, you need you need a long time to well, figure it out. I feel like I really want to watch very mobile offers, right? Like Kenny Guardian, you know, that combination who just have that kind of run and gun style where they hardly even stop with the AWP and keep shooting, right? You know, I want to see how that affects, oh. you know, how this is going to affect that. Yeah. It seemed like Guardian earlier was, you know, he was like missing a couple shots with the quick peaks where you would think, you know, he wouldn't normally miss those. Yeah, and JW pulling out the C set, trying to take a run at people. Who the knows? J Whirlwind, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I mean, I, I've try to do as much theory crafting as I as I could in my mind to try and figure out you know how how is this gonna, like who is this going to impact who's going to benefit who's going to not benefit for it mm-hmm. ultimately as I was saying earlier I haven't actually been able to play the game myself uh, while I've been here in Sweden um, so but next week hopefully I can and then I, I'll I think I'll have a, a more educated opinion on it essentially but I mean I, I'm still excited about the fact that the value has have even been added I mean obviously the acceleration values were always there but the tagging mm-hmm. values have been added which means now we have more, you know, more values to control the game with, and that's ultimately a good thing. Whether or not we have the right values right now, mm-hmm. too soon to say probably. Again, we were talking about the the idea that grenades add tagging um, slow to it, to the, and I, I that seems like a, an absurd idea to me. I'm not sure why grenades should slow people down. But, uh, uh, it just, everything it seems else like seems good thing. to me. It seems like another thing that would favor, you know, defensive turtleish play, just because CT, you know, like. I just feel like there's a certain. It's very deliberate when you shoot at somebody and you, you know you hit them and that's it. They get tagged. They get slowed down a little bit, mm-hmm. and it sort of depends on what weapon they're carrying and what weapon you're shooting with and stuff like that, right? There's sure. all sorts of, of input there. It just feels to me like grenades are a lot more situational, whereas you could be throwing a grenade on someone if they happen to be peeking right then. It's upsetting if that loses you the fight because you can't re- you can't fall back quick enough or you know somehow your your movement impaired and it's just like a it's it feels more random with grenades. That's well, we need we need to see now we need to look at like the common nade spots right on yeah. these maps like Inferno mid Inferno banana uh, these rush spots as well. How how do the nades affect those spots and how do those nades affect the rushes? Because you know it's bad enough that you ate a nade on a rush and you, you get tagged down pretty uh, pretty heavily, yeah. but now you get slowed as well. So that's really tough. Now well, we get to see here, pistol round. Yes, and it looks like mouse sports are hoarding and grouping up towards the B bomb site. And actually, there is a Molotov on AC and a couple of grenades as well. So one of them is going to rain out here. Does actually do a, an insane amount of damage. Left here almost dead. AC, well, he gets a, a shot to the face on Chris J. And now mouse sports are tr- stuck up here. Yeah, they're going to try and take this fight as well, but it's going to be setting it up for the debris. bomb is at A. And this is something that mouse sports do. This is a mouse sports play here, but Dignitas as well. They haven't seen the bomb yet, so they don't rotate the man off. And actually, that get, that buys enough time for Dupree to flank his way in there and stop Alu from getting on that site. Now, Michael Lilly, one by one v five, he just gets caught. And actually, Dupree comes hunting for him with the CZ seventy five. He picks up three kills. If that had worked out, it would have been it would have been miraculous. But what actually happened was kind of more the equivalent of going all in in poker with a two seven suit off you know offhand or something like that. Yeah. Just, you know, just like wrong. <laughs> Different suits and two seven, and you just push all your chips in, and the other, the other, the other guy just calls it straight away, and you just lose all your chips. I think that's basically what Mossport just did. Very sad. Very no, sad. Look at this though. Fetish is gonna. It looks like Fetish is gonna be our point man opera here for Divinity Toss. Yeah, which is actually what he does on um on on Mirage. Mm-hmm. Um, almost every other map, it'll be Device picking it up, but on, on this particular map and on Nuke, it's Fetish who uh, who's on in Nuke, charge of yeah. it. Yeah. So so that's what it is. 
Alu, Alu waking up. He manages to get two kills. It's going to be Sipnix taking a fight here. Top mid, Leggy is down. But we're into a two-on-two two now. Mouse Sports off the back of Alu and that CZ have actually opened everything up here. They have so much time to work so with, smart. which is very interesting. I mean, they can they can kind of just use Alu as a tool in the middle of the map and see if, if Dignitas are going to rotate around. I mean, if he just waits here, this is a good idea. Uh, this is brilliant, and they are, in fact, rotating over to the B-side. Tabson is way ahead right now. He's going to be able to get this bomb plan out. And the oh. question now, I mean, look at Fetish. I mean, he's trying to work his way in here through the B-apartments. But Sitmix walks right into Alu, and there's going to be a free kill. Alu is going to be able to pick up a rifle as well. Yeah, really good job from, from our sport. Smart, smart thinking here. This grenade could actually kill, well, either one. So Fetish, he's not using it right now. Just going to be walking in, and Tabson is there for the kill. Alu with the triple, and Mouse Sports, they win the eco round with uh, with rifle uh, with some armor as well. That's just very cool. Nicely done from the terror side. Alu, man. Alu coming in with two huge frags. And it looks like we're going to be in for another pause here, guys, but it's a one-to-one. -one. And now yeah. Dignitas, I mean, they've just lost the second round. They're slaughter they could potentially have to eco for two rounds running now. I mean, this is yeah. this is double eco territory. Although Fetish did hold up, like Fetish only going with the USP, right? So he potentially has enough. I mean, he has around 4K right now. So maybe not double eco. Maybe they try and eke out a buy right now, Dignitas. Yeah. But, but Vendetta would have been would have been upset, right? Because yeah. what if Fetish didn't have a USP? What if he had had a you know a scout or a from us in the middle? Mm -hmm. Anything Could, at all? Yeah, anything at all. An SMG. Buy an ump if you want to just you know skimp. If you want to skimp a little bit, now you have that option actually yeah. because of the armor pen to be able to actually go for an SMG on the cheap. So a bit better than a pistol. And, uh, you know, you, you still get that AWP fast. And if you get a couple of kills with an ump, 600 bucks in your pocket each kill, that's, that's not too shabby. So, hmm. Yeah, it's, I mean, there's a lot of things you can look at now, especially such a big patch coming out. And a lot of people getting really excited about it. So it's cool to see, you know, things coming through here, especially le le leading up to the next major that's just been announced. I mean, DreamHack Winter, it's like two months away. And our next major is right here, Anders. This is sick. I'm so glad that you know it was announced so early because now the teams, they have this now to prepare for. They know, okay, it's going to be these maps, and we have all the time now to adjust to this patch and perhaps you know work around this. Yeah. And I mean, it's been... I've heard frustration for at least from a couple of different teams mm -hmm. saying, you know, when do, when do we know if it's going to be? Because it's going to be on everyone's lips. Everyone's just been assuming mm -hmm. that that's probably what will happen. But it's a different thing once you hear the announcement. Uh, so I think it's, there's just a general feeling of relief. I mean, in the community at large, but also with, amongst the pro players, I'm pretty sure people are, are pretty excited about oh, it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What would be really cool is if, like, in a month from now, mm -hmm. we already knew what the major following that would be. That would be an upgrade if we could, if yeah. we could see that far into the future. See what uh, 2015 has to offer. Yeah. I mean, That'd be cool. I mean, March, Katowice, that could be right around the corner. But again, that's like four months wait. It feels likely, right? It feels very likely that that yeah. could be happening, but we don't know. What Again. I'm really happy about now, though, is that potentially this could mean that I buy Power Cloud 9, if they have the travel support to come over here and, and actually boot camp, they could be here boot camping for what? Like a month, a month and a half now. With this announcement, basically, it means that, hell, two weeks from now, we could have the, the two top NA yeah. teams rolling in and just boot camping, getting prepped up for DreamHack. Yeah, it definitely could. That would be, that would be just yeah. incredible. So sick to see to have to, for them to have the time here oh. to be able to participate even in online leagues. Come join us, American friends. Come it would on. be it would be it would be enjoyable. Well, you know, I have I have I have place at uh, yeah room a room in my place for at least Hiko. He can you know come stay. I do miss him. <laughs> Hiko, yeah, it's like you tweeting at the other day, like when are you going back, man? Yeah, return Hiko. The Hiko, bro. Either that, or I'm gonna have to you know go and go and visit them. That would also be nice. Yeah, I'd like that because I think ESC like well. did move their um, their schedule to to finish their land sometime in December. Mm -hmm. So that's a really good decision, actually, from from ESC's point of view. But also, I mean, hell, it's starting to get cold over here. Yeah, you know, head over head, head over to uh, you know San Diego, hang out with nothing for a little bit, right? San Diego, nice and warm, good weather. Yeah. He's got a hot tub. That's true. That looked really comfortable. Feels like that would be a good time. But it looks like we have a, a stand in here for Team Dignitas. Yes, STFN. I'm guessing that's St Stefan. Um, it could be. I'm not sure who that stand in is, but he's got a Dignitas tag. Actually, I am wondering if this is their manager playing. Um, who is it is. Yeah, 3K2. So um, that could be yeah, their coach, manager, former source player. Uh, big name in the Danish scene back in the day and um, now doing good work uh, managing the team here. Now also standing in apparently, but they only have pistols. Kind of hard for him to have much of an impact here and. Well, Fetish is in the kitchen. It's a bit of a brutal start, start right? You know, like, yeah. oh, yeah, we need you to stand in. Oh, by the way, we're ecoing versus rifles. Have fun. Yeah, do your best here. 
Oh, Dupree's going to catch Alu. That's actually pretty good. If Device could do the same, and it looks like he's almost able to. No, Tamsin's going to pick him off. He was coming through the connector, so no, no chance there. And now they're hunting. Looking for a slice of Dupree. Pretty far going in here, so Dupree now knows at least that there's a couple guys, or one guy over the A site. He's going to be able to hold on to this rifle, so this is a big save. And talking about that money that Fetish has uh, held on to as well, they could potentially they force. Could. I'm Actually, I would be happier to see them not. I really would be happier to see them yeah. not. I mean, yeah, you, glass cannon yeah, off on Fetish. I was it. just about to say, that's exactly what they what they need to do, just because it's so crazy. You know, it's like it's like a force buy worthy of hell raises almost. It is. I don't know. It, you can afford to give away an extra round to mouse sports, especially since it's so early in the half. You could afford to give away an extra round for mouse sports and just guarantee that you have all of the money with all of the nades and the, all the gear basically on Dignitas' side. And so here they decide to play it risky. Yeah, fetish though will open up and AC's here with the max seven. He's gonna delay the jump for a little bit. He misses the shot and now coming back into it, they're gonna take him down. And uh, well, 3K2 is gonna fall as well to. My kill early, finished with a second kill with the AWP, and the bomb is already planted, and these smokes are really doing wonders for mouse sports. How are Dignitas going to bring it back in, especially because Device is really far away. Dupree is up here, sure, but Device is only just coming in from Catwalk, so they're running out of time really quick here. It's going to be, should be a free kill there coming in, but somehow Legia stays alive forever and ever. How is that possible? Michael Lele is going to get two kills at the end, Fetish and Dupree both gone. It's going to be Device on short, who did manage to pick up a frag, or he did not, actually. Oh, that's Dupree. No, actually, it wasn't even a fetish who actually jumped in from Kitchen, I think, with the USP to save the day, but that was a big misplay, a misplay there coming out from Dupree, unfortunately. Device is going to pick up a, a frag at the very end, but the fact is that if Dupree gets that kill immediately, mm. it allows probably the full focus is going to be on Dupree, and that means Device can start getting in from, uh, from, from Catwalk as well. And also AC just barely missing that shot. That's so close. That's painful. So our right. mouse bots winning a third round and Dignitas, they save the AK, but everyone else is secoing and... Mm -hmm. So they're going to give away another round now. That's a scary thing. I mean, that's the gamble that they go for. Yeah. You know, going for that early buy, it could have worked. Dupree with a huge opportunity that just didn't pay off. Chris J's got the AWP here for mouse sports though, so I know that warms the cockles of your heart, Anders. Uh, yeah. Where is the shot? Uh, they've got to be careful to check this corner. 3k2 is uh, right here, and he's going to be peeking up really quick here with the USPS, but he can't land enough damage for it to really pay off, and Fetish is going to go down too. So, question is, do they want to commit this AK to actually trying to take some kills, or should they just run away with it? And I'm more, I'm more for the running away. Yeah, hold on to the gun. Save it for the next round. You'll be able to draw for your mate. Basically, you can just hand this AK or an M4 over to a teammate who won't be able to afford full nades, for example. What so is AC covering right now? AC's he's down in CT. Sure, I mean, is he just making sure that there isn't going to be a flank? I think he's, like, scratching his, I don't know, thigh or something because he's not moving his mouse. Just walking back. So, yeah, they're going to save the AK. Mouse Sports choose a different route to get out of the bomb site with, so not any extra kills, not yet anyway. Dupree trying his best. But he's not going to be able to take down Michael Lille. So that's going to be a fourth round for Mouse Sports. And Dignitas kind of just have to pretend at this point that they lost the pistol. And, you know, maybe they got one round, then they lost another round. You know, they have to mentally forget about the fact that they kind of, uh, you know, screwed up a little, bit, a little bit in the beginning here. Mm -hmm. Try and get back into it. Well, that's what exactly, and with the stand into boot, it is a bit tricky. And Mouse Sports, you know, we were, we were talking about it. You know, a full ro a full roster for Dignitas, a full roster that is. You know, we put them ahead of Mouse Sports, but with Mouse Sports now having the experience on this map and clearly having ideas in mind as to what they want to do, Dignitas pauses having a stand in. It's going to be a it's going to be a difficult fight for them to come back into this in a meaningful way, especially after yeah. going for force buy sorts of things. You know, force buys and that's those sorts of situations. That's why I was kind of surprised. I'm like, hmm. Doesn't feel like that's that's exactly the go-to. I mean, feels like maybe a dignitas a little under pressure there. I think I think the fact is that it was it was like seconds away from from working essentially mm -hmm. because Fetish got those two opening frags with the AWP. So yeah, it's like the they, it's like it should have probably worked, but um, but then AC missed the max seven shot, or he missed the 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 free kill essentially mm -hmm. on Legia, and then the round fell apart. I mean, I think that's yeah. It still it still was like a a decent idea, but it is a it is a risk, and this time it just didn't pay off for them. Um, but I mean, I I don't know. I still think it's too, it's still pretty early in the first half. So I think I don't think Dignitas are 
are like super scared yet. Oh, Dignitas could work with 9 6. Yeah, they could. That's the thing. They could let Mouse Sports get up to six rounds and still probably feel all right with the situation. Yeah. I feel like if it gets past that point, that's when we start getting into Danger Town. Yeah. Because Mouse Sports as well. I mean, Mouse Sports, you know, we oh, talk yeah. about it at the beginning of this game. Alu and Chris J, you've got that double off potential there. They could really mess up with Dignitas. Mess with Dignitas. I mean, yeah. Dignitas are going to know that that could be a standard play, obviously, because that's kind of Mouse Sports' bag. That's always been their thing where it's like, you know, double off is ours, right? When yeah. Titan did it, you know, they were kind of miffed. They're like, but we're the double op team, you know. That, that's our thing. You know, you can't, you can't come in here and do that too. Uh, now, do Dignitas manage to adjust in time? Not sure what's going on right now, guys. So it seems like we have another pause on the, you know, that's happening. But more people having issues. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, AC was not moving his mouse at the end, so maybe he. I was about to say like he's probably eating cord. some pizza or something. You know, he's like getting some food. Pizza, pizza would be pretty good right now. I make that as well. Homemade pizza. Yeah, you do. You're Re telling me. Much better. Much better than actual, you know, Who pizza from the shop. actually makes the cast iron pizza? Oh, no, that was uh, apparently a friend. He, he, what he does is he'll make it with the oven. He'll make the homemade pizza, yeah. but he'll heat a cast iron skillet. He just puts yeah. it there on the stove, heats it up till it's whistling, and then he'll p turn it over, put it in the oven, and put the pizza on the cast iron, sk on the cast oh. iron st skillet. So basically you have the, the yeah, even yeah. where it's like the oven that's heating it from the top, and then the cast iron skillet is cooking it from the bottom. And it just does it like, you know, a couple minutes, put the pizza in there, it's cooked, you take it out, and it's delicious. So maybe That's guys, advanced. If you've got a cast iron skillet at home and you want to try it, there you go. All right. Well, there's always, I mean, it's always room for experiments like that. Good fun. Chris, <laughs> definitely <laughs> a little bit weird. It looked like his, he didn't do the flick. He just kind of halfway did it. I'm wondering if he actually bumped his hand into something on his keyboard or, you know, on his mouse pad, because that definitely didn't look right. Uh, well, device is waiting at a really good angle here. Leg here. I think he's going to have a really hard time doing this, especially when he's not even looking. Yeah. Uh, should have paid more attention in preschool, you know, cross the road and all that stuff, look both ways. And okay. one way he didn't even have to look because there was a wall. He could have just looked the other way and it would have been great. Well, Bomb is actually gifted straight onto Sibnix and the mouse one, well, it works really well for him. But 3k2 did come in with the kill here. It's the manager playing, the guy called STFN with a smiley face or some sort in the middle. It's actually the Dignitas manager, former Source uh, Pro. Yep. Got a lot of history there, actually, but he's doing great things for the team. Making yeah, sure that uh, always traveling with them and everything. Yeah. yeah, exactly. He's always there. He's got the team's back. And yeah. it looks like Sipnix is back now to replace AC. So that's what happened during that break. Uh, mm -hmm. At least Dignitas right now managing to do uh, to get something done. In fact, uh, they turn it around and pick up a second round. So now Mouse Sports are the ones going for the double AWP, but on the T side. And does he put the shot through the wall there? I was wondering. Because you can wall bang that position. He thought about it. He didn't think about it for a second. But then, you know, give away your position as well if you don't get the kill. It's What's really interesting is that actually both the orbs are working towards this A bomb site. One is apartments, one is on slope. So they're really, if they're trying to cover a, as big an angle into the bomb site as they can, so that if anyone from Dignitas has decided to go for a peek anywhere, it's a bigger chance they'd get picked off by one or the other. But it's going to be Fetish taking down Alu, in fact. And Alu missed the shot entirely. So now Chris. The other orb remaining tries to get Dupree, but doesn't succeed. And now they're going to go for a bit of a crunch play. Only one guy coming up from middle, so three of them coming in here. And already Chris opening up, but he's going to get taken down. Fetish with a kill on uh, Michael Lady, who's coming in from the middle. So now this is a, not a good push from our sports any longer. The Molotov does help to fall Dupree out, and that works a little bit. Still leaves Leggy alone in an almost unwinnable one on three. Some great spray comes through, and actually, with the time left here, he can pick up the bomb and get the bomb down. This is now doable. Insane play from Legia, taking that fight against every, all three of them, basically. Yeah, incredible. I mean, he almost gets the spray control onto Stefan as well. That was some sick control. And now Legia, he takes out Sipnix, who jumps the gun, doesn't wait for his mate to get into position, and he just wants to draw the attention over here. Make it, make it so that Legia is thinking, okay, it's going to be connector now from this guy. I just picked off the guy in CT, and he's not going to be looking at the right way, but then he turns around, he sees it coming, he's in the corner, but oh. Stefan gets the headshot. All right, Mr. Manager, stepping in up. They need to put him on the payroll on the team as well. Yeah, so he was actually playing that as a bit of a long con just from the very beginning, deciding to rotate all the way around. It looked like Legge had the ankle, but um, just couldn't pick it up. Tabson has enough of a bank to be able to drop for Alu here, mm -hmm. so Mouse Sports will still be buying, but um, apparently other people are still having issues. He could potentially drop an AWP as well and not really suffer, uh, suffer yeah. too much from it. True. So. There's that option still for mouse sports. That was almost a one on three from Legia, though. Yeah, that was really nice. That second, the second one, the spray control, dropping him down to three HP yeah. through the smoke. That was so close. And the thing is, if it had been the type of one on three where they had sort of 
like he had picked them off one at a time, it would have been a little bit less impressive. But the fact that he jumped over and just started, you know, fighting all of them, basically. He was just like, come at me! Yeah. I mean, he got the first kill almost instantly, and then the second guy was running away, and mm -hmm. then the smoke helped him to pick up the bombers. Just a lot of stuff working for Legia. Kind of cool. Yeah, no, really impressive. I mean, just really, that's the kind of play that we enjoy to see as well, yeah. because it's that kind of play that... that that heroic play, right? That can just turn the tide. And it's also the kind of play that can really just fire up your team behind it as well. I mean, you pull off yeah. a 1v3 clutch, you get in their face, and you just say, okay, guys, look, I can do it. 1v3, the rest of your team, they follow suit, and then all of a sudden, you've got a successful first half. But right now, Dignitas are just holding them back from that. Uh, they need a couple more rounds, Mouse Sports, yeah. basically, to say, like, okay, we, we did everything we came to do in this first half. We're looking good. Whereas Dignitas, you know, they're starting to slowly but surely get more and more control. Yeah. That's pretty much it. So um, it's a little bit unfortunate that uh, the players are having some issues, but I mean, at least it seem, seems like they're resolving them pretty quickly. So we'll see. It is Fetish who has stolen Chris J's AWP and trying to use it against them, but Chris has bought one of his own. So that's that's good news. 4-3 being the scoreline here and Dignitas trying to recover from the initial mistake they made in the second round where they ended up losing to pistols and armor. I like this play here by Fetish as well. A little smoke there to stop off underpass. Takes a peek up top mid. Doesn't see anybody, but he has to be worried. Or he has to, you know, exactly be aware that that smoke is going to clear. And he turns around in time to be able to potentially pick off Michael Lele, who's lurking, just looking for that window position. The is about to walk into this as well. And Michael Lele walks away just as he gets in there. Oh. Bit of a pre fire there for Michael Lele. Actually gives up his position and the follow up grenade. Still some decent damage being put out here onto the Dignitas team. Michael Lele taking a little bit less than he. Uh, then he gave out. Chris will open up onto AC, which leaves only the one person defending the B bomb side, and he's actually walking out the wrong way here. So, 3K2's got to somehow get back into the site here. Otherwise, it could end up horrible for them. Dupree, they would have had a nice crossfire here if they'd had the guy in apartments. Dupree's about to get shot in the side of the head as well. Tabs him coming in, and we'll take him down. Yeah, that's him hearing the steps there. And now Fetish <gasps> has to rotate in. But yeah, exactly. Stephanie drops the bomb carrier exactly up in B apartments. Two on three situation, and now all of a sudden, things are about to get hairy. He even has the smoke. There's only 10 seconds left on this clock. He can actually stay alive. If he stays alive in this position, he's won the round. Yeah, inside the bomb site, they have another guy living. Yeah, so there's nothing they can do anymore. Oh, God. Does it turn out that 3-2K is actually a, a genius? Did he see this coming somehow? Fetish picked up the last kill as well. That's a triple and Dignitas steal around that they absolutely should not have been able to steal. That is so absurd. If they choose any other route for the bomb, they just outright win that round, get up to five and start celebrating. But now, what the hell do we just see? That was, yeah, that was perfectly done there by Stefano. You can be sure. I mean, once he puts out that smoke and sees the time, he's just grinning. He's just sitting there being like, yep, okay then. So long as I stop them from pushing through here, oh. we've got this round in the bag. And Alu gets killed after the, after the clock ticks down as well. Chris J, despite getting the headshot on Fetish, he will get taken out. Team Dignitas managed to recover somewhat. Mike Lele will get the drop on Icy, but then it's just a crossfire from above. But that's, that was a real brutal round there for Mouse Sports. And now Alu, he has enough for an AK in Kevlar, and that's what he does. So it's going to be a buy round here for Mouse Sports. I'd, I'd pay at least maybe one of these crates of Red Bulls we have here at the office to get an interview and figure out whether or not 3K2 actually f saw that coming. If he thought they're probably going to take this bomb this way. If he did that, and that's not even impossible. I mean, it, it could have been just plain luck. It could have been just like, you know, luck of the draw. He ended up in the right position. Uh, but if he really saw that coming, that's so cool. That's the kind of stuff that makes Counter-Strike uh, a really cool game. And somehow AC gets the kill on Tabs and oh, what is going on, Mouse Sports? On Tabson as well, who played so well on both maps tonight. Navi versus Navi and on the first mass map of Overpass as well. Tabson was the point man, but this time around... He drops the ball, and AC will manage to turn that into a one-for-one one one trade situation when it should have just been an entry frag for Mouse Sports. Yeah, and that's still not that bad. I mean, they also did damage to Michael Lele, who's down to 44, and now Dupree's here with the auto-sniper banging through and actually does tag leg here. Grenade follow-up not doing too much, but Fetish is here, gets an easy kill on Alu. And now, yeah, the Scar 20 is back in action, and Fetish is there on the... Other side, they're just getting picked apart here by these scope rifles, and they're being backstabbed as well. So even if they don't get that kill in there, it was already being flanked around six four, and that's five rounds in a row here for Team Dignitas and Mouse Sports. 
they could buy a 3 8, 4 AKs and one Galil, but they would have almost no grenades. And I think that's actually the main reason why they don't here. Mm -hmm. They would have had no, I mean, almost no smokes. Yeah, they still have plenty of time in this half as well, though, to get those rounds, to get like the last two rounds if they want them. I mean, get up five, six rounds is what they're aiming for. So rather than go for a risky buy where they spend everything, they even out their money with Kevlar, Helmet, couple nades, right? And they're just going to even their money so that they get max money in the next round. Oh, wait a minute. Gotta wonder if this is going to be like one of those magic apple type title grenades. The Guardian loves so much. Step and go for it. All coming through that flashbang. Not going to flash him. He's got the M4, but he doesn't get a single kill. Tamsin will take him down. So maybe a bit of a wasted opportunity. Now AC trying to take the fight long range here. And got to be really careful they don't drop another rifle here. They can definitely retake this bomb site, but they do. Alu comes in with a CSAT 75. Device almost catches him, but this is a really scary situation for Dignitas. Wow, and he gets right around their corner again. Then Device gets the instant shot onto Legia. Bit of the wall bang there, but that's looking real good. Device working his way back into this site now, all the waiting around the corner, gets caught. Man jumping out of the apartments, but that sets it up for Taps and with that M4. Yeah, but his teammates weren't even trying. Device was actually fighting alone, because already, as he was taking the first couple of fights, they were just waiting here. They've decided to save the AWP and the Auto Sniper, and that's two rounds now that Dignitas have lost to just pistols. Two out, I mean, two out of the five that Mouse Sports have a pistol or just eco rounds here. That mm -hmm. is really, really painful if you're on the Danish side. That's got to hurt. This is exactly losing anti eco situations. And 3K2 was in a fantastic position as well. He tried to go for the point man, though. And that's that may be just you know, lack of experience, perhaps, or whatever. But he just tries to turn around and pick off the first guy. And that's, uh, you know, instead of going for the guys who are still following up behind that smoke. So 3K2, bit yeah. of a missed opportunity there. If he, if he even just gets one guy, make it a one for yeah. one, you know, that's. It's all right, but you know, just confirming that the rush is happening and Dignitas are able to rotate in, great, but he really needed to get that yeah. like one kill there at least. Yeah, and probably, I don't know, probably AC should have been waiting. As, like, taking the fight initially is all right, but I mean, him, yeah. him dying as well. There's a couple of things that went wrong there, unfortunately, for, for the Dignitas team. Good for Mouse Sports, because I mean, they're back on five rounds here, and... Um, Oh, it's like also good for Mel Sports just because, you know, they go for that all-out aggression and it actually pays off really yeah. well because if uh, AC is over, at, he was at top of short as well. So he's about as far as he can get away from that. So by the time he comes back around, he's aiming and they just come leaping out of the apartments. Too yeah. many targets to shoot at and... That's it. Yeah, that it just doesn't get it. the job done. So Dignitas now, we're looking at 6-5. So Dignitas, yeah. they, they have to buckle down here with 3K2 and actually... Um, pick up the remaining ha rounds in this half. If they walk out of this 9-6, I don't think Dignitas are going to be too happy. No, I don't think so either. I mean, it's it's fairly workable with 9-6, but I think at 9-6, it, it does become a little bit of a requirement to win the follow-up yeah. pistol round and, you know, get themselves to like 12-6 and then hopefully be able to, to finish out the game. Mm -hmm. I think 10-5 pistol round is still nice, but they can sort of manage without it. Uh, but anything anything more than that, I mean, the fact is, Mouse Sports could still end up at 7 rounds where we're at now. And, you know, that's really scary. If they, they were to win this next round, that's real danger for Dignitas having to eco. Yeah. So and that's, that's yeah, really seven possible. Seven rounds is definitely possible. So there's a lot there's a lot going on here in the first half. And uh, I want to see Mouseports go for a smoke round on A now, basically. Just yeah, pull standard. out smoke round, standard smoke round. Yeah, why not? Take the A site and then just go from there, right? If they can actually lock that down and take a round off of that, then Dignitas, because if it is like a standard A site and they manage to get a pick off of that, that may yeah. even prompt Dignitas into saving rifles rather than taking fights. They could try and, uh, try and do something that we've seen Fnatic do a couple of times on this map, which mm -hmm. is um, which is the play where they like they smoke off the window and then actually boost a guy into the window. And they have, too. yeah, that's, they have that's been going times. for that. Michael Lele, they did do that, but Fetish was waiting for him. So I'm curious if Dignitas are like aware that mouse sports like to do that sort of thing. I mean, we only saw it happen once, but... Uh, Fetish was ready that one time, but it is going to be a full buy round here for Dignitas. No surprise there. They still had money in the bank. Mouse Sports uh, cool. will have a good buy as well. And yeah. let's go ahead and get into the actual match. There we go. So, yeah. Oh, great flashbang through, but Chris was also flashed. So, oh, that's a bit of a coin flip. And it lands on the, on the Danish side this time around. So, Chris goes down. Now, IEC is going to be just running straight into Legia. I'm not exactly sure why, but Legia then runs straight into Device. So, a little bit of a, I don't know, careless play on both sides, I would say. Yeah, and the change of position as well. Device, the one with the AWP. We see them do this from time to time, Dignitas. But a flash in the connector, and Tamsin somehow does not get that kill on Stefan. Two huge opportunities for Tapson so far, and that's that's actually pretty painful. But then Alu will be able to walk in. He manages to pick up Stefan. There's still Fetish lurking around this corner, though, but Alu reacts in time. And this is excellent now for Mouseports. They bring it back to a two-on-two. -two. 
Oh, but the pre has a Molotov and a grenade. So if they, yeah, the, this smoke is going to be kind of good. But at the same time, he can probably def he can probably deny one of these positions just with the Molotov. But he's not even going to try. It. And he takes down Alu anyway, jumping up. So that's much better play. Follow up grenade and then the Molotov. Now Michael Ellie made enough noise that he knows where he is. That's a still a grid headshot, jumping on the box and now down into T spawn. But Device has another grenade, and he's far enough away not to get tagged. Device smokes off here and it's going to go straight for the. He fakes it once and yeah, Michael Lilly hears that smoke going off. He instantly bites. And that's going to be Dignitas winning the round anyway. That audio cue is just. It instantly just screams. He's in there diffusing in the smoke and I'm not going to be able to catch him in time. Because you actually don't hear that so that diffuse sound. Yeah. If, if the smoke goes off before, you know, maybe Michael Lilly hears it, but he, he fakes and then throws the smoke. It's like it could be that left handed smoke, right? Where you know he's getting on it. Ah. There's a bunch yeah. of different situations there, but really clever that play there by device to bait Michael Lilly out into the open. So 7 5, and the Dignitas House actually would have been echoing, so it's pretty good for them. Nice grenade gonna land here and actually tag up a bunch of people, but Mouse Bolts do even better. They get leggier on a kill there on 3k2. The manager for Dignitas House playing here, and AC is gonna go down as well. Throwing a grenade a little bit too far. Alu gets the drop on Fetish, and now. It just looks fantastic for the terror side. Yeah, they've got control of the A site now. The remaining two members, Device Dupree has rotated over to that B site, expecting some pressure perhaps over there. And Device just, you know, holding with the AWP. But now Mouse Sports, they have that A site for free pretty much. They're just legging the bomb over there now. Or are they? I mean, they're walking their way over there. It seems like they want to try and get out on this map perhaps and see if they can't track one of these guys down, get some info. Yeah, they're looking just towards CT still. They aren't really sure where Dignitas are. It's not a bad idea. I mean, if you really feel confident in your ability to go and hunt people, you could just wait till there's 10 seconds left and then put down the bomb and spend the rest of the time not necessarily fighting them, but just checking the rest of the map until you find them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Maximize the amount of time that you have to work with uh, to get those kills. Now it's... I mean, it's still Device. Bit of an awkward spot. I mean, he's looking towards that murder hole. And he's not going to get the shot. So now at least Malfoy's know that he's lurking around here. They really want to try and see if they can get their way through here, but he's not letting them. The problem is if he stays here, he could get backstabbed as well because there is someone wrapping around Dupree in a pretty good spot here, and it's going to pick off Michael Elia, so no problem there, but Device has still got to be really careful. And yeah, now they're coming in from behind. Oh, and the AWP is gone, so good job from Mouseboards. Yeah, an expensive round there, but Device still has 10k, actually, so they're going to get a rifle buy in here, no problem. Stefan will be able to buy, or he should have a rifle drop for him. But that's all of their bank now going into this round here for Dignitas. So this is get, where it gets really scary for Mouseports. You know, that situation where Dignitas have to eco is still possible. So Mouseports, big opportunity for them here. And there you go. Michael Lilly will catch the free nade in hand. And that's going to be the entry frag for Mouseports. Yeah, he got the close spawn to middle. So that's why they, they threw him over the AWP. So just using those randomized spawns a little bit and, uh, and making it work. 3k2, was he scoping just like between his uh, feet then? That's kind of interesting. But the manager is gone. Fetish trying with the pistols to see if he can make it out. Almost got the kill actually while Flash there. And AC is there to follow up and take down Tabs. And maybe there's still a chance here. It's a three on four. They're a man down and the bomb is going to go down any second. And I think all hope just vanished when Alu picked up that kill on AZ. Yeah, that's it pretty much. Now Dignitas, they're in, that, they're in mid. Both of them in mid actually. They're going to manage to get up to top mid. But they're already out hunting for the mouse They know exactly what Dignitas have in mind. They know they want to back off and try and hold on to these guns. So Mouseports, good play by them. They're actually trying to find their way over here fairly quickly, but Fetish is going to find Legia, and that was in T-Spawn. So Mouseports, they know where Fetish is lurking. Device lurking at top mid. Does he find Alu? Yes, he does. Insta-kill. Yeah, so they're kind of covering each other here, Dignitas House, making sure that nobody can get easily backstabbed because they're kind of, you know, they got their backs turned to each other. Each mm -hmm. other. We'll see if Chris can get this killed as well. Fetish has the right angle. He misses the shot, though, so Chris is going to survive. 7-7, seven, seven. Mouse Sports really off to a good start here in the first half. Dignitas, 8-7 yeah, would be good, but then they still need to win the pissed round, and they need to win that follow-up fourth round now, too. If there's some distance before the Danish team is back in the driver's seat here. This should be a four-rifle situation, though. Stefan, Stefan doesn't have a rifle. He... Mm, I don't know, apparently not. They have the two orbs. They're just thinking, well, we'll get the kills with the orbs, and then someone can just pick up a rifle. They did get the kill there, but Alu with the good return, and Device will pick up Legia. But now, yeah, he's going to have to smoke to get out of here. And Alu misses the timing a little bit. And Device isn't actually even interested. Look at this. Is there a gap there in the smoke that he can see through? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, there is. Oh, wow. That's so tricky. 
really tricky. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh yes, he gets it. <laughs> <laughs> That's good patience there from AC, though. Yeah, and I bet Chris thought he was being so sneaky, right? <laughs> Just ready and waiting now. Are they gonna?